Hello, everyone. Welcome to the B Train Podcast. Recently, I had the chance to sit down with Brian Orr of HVACSchool.com and discuss a few topics, one of those being his opinions on ATOL refrigerants and also his take on the state of our industry as we know it today. I hope that you enjoy this and get a lot out of this nearly as much as I did because we really, really had a good time making this. Hey, welcome to B-Train Take 5. This actually is the first edition, and uh, I have a very, very special guest with us today, and he's actually going to kick off the, uh, the entire series, and uh, I know it says Take 5, but this may be a three or four or five or six parter, <laughs> okay. so we're not sure just yet what we're going to do, but uh, Mr. Brian Orr is with us today, and I'm so glad that you have uh, taken your time out to come and join us. Uh, you're doing a live event here yeah. with us today uh, in Birmingham, and and I know with your schedule, it took a lot to get you here, and and, uh, and you can tell us about Elise coming with you yeah, as you wish yeah. to. And yeah, your daughter's with us, and she's back there waving. Yeah, she's really excited. Yeah, yeah. she's she's always excited to see me speak. You know, so it's yeah. really really entertaining to my children. Of all absolutely, that. absolutely. <laughs> I, well, I, you know, you and I talked last <laughs> night, and I said, you know, I didn't know my dad went to work every day. I didn't know what he did. Yeah, you know, he went to work, and then he came home, and I, he had a job. Uh, you know, he never took me to work. I didn't know. You know, so this is really neat that uh, your children and at least especially gets to come with you yeah. and share that time. I with have you. to drag her along, but I think she'll appreciate it someday. Yeah, yeah, yeah she will. Yeah, she will absolutely. But um, we just want to discuss a few things and naturally kind of get to know you better. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've just got a few things we're going to discuss. And number one was I have I think how did you get involved in HVAC or why? More I think in our industry, more why did you get involved? Yeah. And um, what brought you into this industry from the beginning? Yeah, so uh, I, I, very young, knew that I didn't want to spend a lot of time at a behind a desk. I didn't want to spend a lot of time um, in class any more than I needed to. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Even though I enjoy learning things, for sure, I enjoy learning because there's a problem to solve. And uh, at a very young age, um, I had met the young lady that I wanted to marry, and so mm -hmm. I, I told my dad that, and he uh, he took me seriously, surprisingly, and <laughs> said, uh, he said, okay, that's fine, but yeah. uh, if you're going to do that, then I would suggest that you get a trade, because then that way you have something nobody can ever take away from you, regardless sure. of what happens in the economy or whatever. Sure. And that turned out to be really good advice. So so my father yeah. was an electrician and a, and a general contractor, and so I knew I didn't want to do the same thing as him. I, I just, right. you know, we're both type A personalities. Right. Uh, right. So I wanted to do something different. So we went through the trade, uh, the trade school catalog, and just looked through the different options. And uh, HVAC and refrigeration sounded like the most interesting to me. It sounded like something that you know, it's sort of like magic. You know, what? How does how does this stuff yeah. work? And, so it wasn't uh, second or third generation. It was no, just, it wasn't. Here no. we go. It was just here we go. Yeah, and, and yeah. Uh, I had a huge advantage going into it because I had already worked as an electrical apprentice. I'd already done a lot of things with my dad, and mm -hmm. even just in conversation, we, we mm -hmm. always love talking about electrical theory and all that. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I did have kind of an unfair advantage going right, into sure. it that part kind of came uh, a little bit easier but sure. but yeah I fell in love with it I've, I've uh, always really enjoyed the trade and right. um, and it's kind of started at 16 and got into a van when I was almost 18 and it's been nothing but HVAC for me ever since wow wow yeah that's um, I, it's similar I, I hear a lot of people say the same thing well I just went through the phone book and saw HVAC and just just chose that we said the same thing when we asked our students why did you get into this industry so yeah very very exciting that was always in Florida Yep, always Where in you're Florida. At now? Always okay. in Florida. I lived for when I was uh, a little younger. I lived for a short period of time in North Carolina. Sure. So long enough for me to fall in love with uh, kind of this part of the world a little right. bit more so. But uh, I've been I've been trapped in Florida ever since, and I think at this point I don't think I'm ever leaving. <laughs> well, you you left 80 degrees yesterday and came into 60. So yeah, I like you, know, you realize that pretty fast. Um, Brian, we all know that that your finger is on the pulse of our industry. You are you are always involved with something happening uh, either from your review of our products that you do so well your daily podcast the things that you put on a regular basis your videos and we I think we all know how dedicated that you are to this industry and um, I was just gonna get your thoughts about what you think about our, the, our challenges for this industry in the next five years what are the largest challenges that you see coming or that you could comment on? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot, there's quite a few. Um, supply chain comes to mind uh, oh, yeah. is a big one, yeah. but I think 
kind of separating out everything that's been going on over the last little bit because we don't know how long that's all going to sure. go on. Sure. Um, labor is the biggest challenge. Um, we all know that. We know that we've got an aging workforce. Uh, the next generation has a different relationship with work. They want different things out of work. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to just, r rather than complaining about it, we've got to embrace it. We've got to rise to the challenge. We've got to figure sure. out how to engage um, uh, the generation of, you know, kind of Gen Z, my daughter's generation, um, get them interested in doing this business. Um, because I think, I think if they understood it better and if we mm -hmm. were willing to be a little less grumpy and a little more, uh, uh, you know, do a little better job selling it, I think we could actually get people involved. So the labor is going to be, is going to be massive. We're going to have a lot of changes in that. Um, I don't think it's something to be scared of. We just have to, we have to adjust. So. Do you see, just as a side note on that, do you see the increasing technology that we have as a plus to get them interested? Yeah, it's, well, it's a plus on two sides. It's a plus to get the next generation interested, true. But it's also a plus because it helps with labor efficiency. Sure. And labor efficiency is the other side of the, uh, of the spectrum that we've got to hit it from. A lot of folks get real concerned about us taking the skill out of the trade, and I'm one of those as much as anybody. You know, it's a, it, it's a different generation as far as understanding some of the fundamentals and we still need to do that but we definitely need to look at ways to utilize technology so that way mm -hmm. things aren't maybe as difficult maybe don't take quite as long as they once sure. did sure um, so that's the other side of that as well because there's a, a lot of a lot of uh, younger younger kids and I especially think of uh, women we need a lot more women in the trades mm -hmm. we need a lot more women technicians mm -hmm. um, maybe in the past they would have been concerned about having to do it because everything was so physically taxing sure, sure. Um, so if we can you know utilize technology utilize machinery in, in order mm -hmm. to make things a little less physically taxing and a little mm -hmm. more cognitive mm -hmm. then I think we can um, you know do it you know take through little bits and pieces work away at that problem sure absolutely so um, uh, supply chain of course yeah. labor and what will be number three for you supply chain labor and then uh, the next one is a little bit abstract but this is what I see from a 50,000 foot view and that is mergers and acquisitions um, and this comes from private equity and institutional investors mm -hmm. there's a lot of folks who have a belief system that they can make a lot of money in HVAC mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of them aren't HVAC people and a lot of them don't have our best interests at heart sure. Uh, and I see this a lot because there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with wanting to invest in our industry. That's perfectly fine. Sure. Uh, but I want it to be people who really understand our industry and who are going to be willing to reward those who have paid their dues and who have who really actually care about sure. it and care fundamentally about the people in it doing the work and then also the customers who are serving. And so I'm concerned about that. Um, and it is going to continue to occur. It's happening at the contractor level. Uh, huge numbers. I mean, it, you know, I own a business and I get the emails. You know, a handful of them every day with right. people scouting around, poking around uh, whether or not I would be interested in selling. Sure. sure. Um, yeah. And uh, it's happening in distribution. It's certainly happening in manufacturing. We've seen that in you know, all these mergers and acquisitions and that side. Yeah, you don't so. know who owns, who owns who tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. And, and and again, I, I'm not. I'm you know I'm a capitalist, so I'm okay with the people who doing business and trying to make sure. a, trying to make a profit doing it. Sure. Sure. Um, but it concerns me when the pace that it's occurring and sometimes some of the thoughtlessness that I think is going on with right. it. Um, I think it's something we have to step back and think about as an industry. Right, right, sure, absolutely. And it, uh, we see more and more of it. I, we call them brokers, you know. They're, yeah. they're always looking for the next, the next thing. Yeah. Um, switching gears just for another moment, um, A2L refrigerants, mm -hmm. uh, they're not coming, they're here. Yeah, they're here. You yeah. know, it's not a matter of we've got to wait on them. Right. They're here, and they're, they're, that is the next generation, and we're looking at the phase out of 410A. Yeah. You know, already, so we're selling brand new equipment now with a refrigerant in it that's already being phased out. Yep. That's the state of our industry. You know, yep. I, I go back to 1980 when R502 heat pumps began, you know, we began losing 502. Yep. You know, and 500 heat pumps, and I worked on all of those, and we saw that phase out. This is the next biggest thing, I think. You know, 410A yep. wasn't that big. But this is huge with eight, with the lightly flammable refrigerants. What are yeah. your thoughts on those? Um, you got you got a couple days. Um, this is this is a tricky one. So I'm going to be as authentic as possible, which I don't know that I've actually ever been before on this. There's one side of me that says that going away from R22 was a mistake, and it isn't even just because I'm not I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not. Um, this isn't a political stance. It's I like just you that, better already. It's just that it's just that R22 actually has a lower global warming potential than 410A does, and a lot Correct. of people don't know that. Right. Um, the reason why we went away from R22 is because it was had had a, a molecule in it that could possibly deplete the ozone, but. 
we we lumped R22 in the same bucket with a lot of highly ozone depleting substances when it was like 0. 0.000, you know, like <laughs> right, sure. it, it would barely even an ozone depleting substance. Right. And through regulation and through short sightedness, we lumped it in, and I think we made it worse. I think mm -hmm. even if you are, and, and I so I appeal to the even the environmentally minded folks out there. I think even if you're an environmentalist, going away from R22 was a mistake. Um, now. There's another side of me that looks at it from completely the other side and says, I'm an educator, I'm a contractor. Getting worked up all the time about what is, right. uh, is a waste of my emotion. Sure. So I don't, I don't get emotional about it, but I would encourage folks to look back and say, hey, let's just, you know, before we just keep running down this path, right. where now we have the potential of people getting injured, now we have, we already have a labor shortage and now we have this huge training impetus, mm -hmm. I don't love it. Sure. Other side of the other side of the coin, though, is is that, and this is so just as controversial, probably more controversial. Um, I wish we would just go ahead and just rip the bandaid off and make all refrigerants propane or or uh, CO two because that's where we're headed anyway. Sure. You know, it's it's actually starting to frustrate me where you do everything in these dribs and drabs, and now we're going to have to keep all these tanks of refrigerant on the truck. Right. We're going to have right. to. How, how are we going to keep all the recovery tanks on our truck? What are we going to do? What's right. going to end up happening? Happening is, and this is the unintended consequences sometimes of environmental regulation. Sure. Is because of this there's going to be more refrigerant vented people who want to do the right thing are going to show up and be like i don't have a tank to put this in right. i don't I, I don't drive around a tractor trailer so right. where the heck am i supposed to put this refrigerant exactly so i think we have to consider unintended consequences that's kind of speaking to the regulators and people who are on boards and panels who make these decisions a lot mm -hmm. of times it's california anyway in most cases it's not the entire country the, in, right. the, the right. industry is is having to work around one state sure which frustrates me as well i understand um well, they make the most noise. Exactly, and they do, and that's and again, and so I will put on my other hat to say, as an educator, it's it's not that bad as long as we do what we're supposed to do. Um, sure. Do I love it? No, I don't. Right. Um, but if we, you know, we, we get so concerned sometimes about things like with flammables, we say, "Oh my gosh, propane! I would never put that in my house." Mm -hmm. It's like, wait a second, do you have a natural gas furnace? Because <laughs> you already got it in your house. Right. Uh, and it's funny because we'll all have my eight-year-old go out and light the grill. You know, a big old 30-pound tank of propane, sure. and I'm not concerned about sure. that at all, no, right? No, no. And so That's are right. we really afraid of flammable substances? The answer is no. We drive around in a vehicle with pistons being fired by many explosions with sure. freaking gasoline in it. So, like, we're not really afraid of that. Right. Um, it just is irritating the pace at which this regulation happens right. and the thoughtlessness and the right. fact that, like, now it's another thing that's a burden on the contractor. It is. So, um, so that's my thoughts. I think it'll be fine. Um, I, I, yeah, will some people get injured? Yeah. Will some people possibly die because of it? Yeah. And I wish people would be honest about that. I wish they would just go ahead and say that, yes, we are using something that is less safe right. because of regulation. Right. And, and I think as educators, that's up to us. Yeah. You know, in class to class, yep. person to person, tech to tech, when we sit down with our technicians or our students, we let all of that, I mean, I, I'm already doing it in a classroom, we go through A2L refrigerants as part of our ozone yep. you know part of a cycle yep. and i tell them i said you know you've got to look out for yourself yep. and on my desk right now i've got the esco a test, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the the test and the exam for that. So, yeah. you know, we're already trying to look toward that. But yeah, and, and one of my best friends is, is Jason Objude, who who does yeah. most of the work on that for ESCO, yeah, sure. and is on a lot of those panels. And uh, and he would probably come at it from another side than me. Right. Um, what I what I would say more than anything else is rather than getting emotional about it, just make sure you train, make sure your people are trained. Um, yeah, will there be some people who probably get injured? Yeah, probably, um, yeah. but. But we don't want it to be on our watch, you know, because That's it actually. isn't actually going to be that tough to stay safe right. as long as we do what we're supposed to do. It's not right. like a lot of people imagine that, you know, you're going to have a little spark and a tools are going to explode. It's not going to be like it's that. It's not quite that. Um, it's, it's not that extreme, but we're going that direction. So dealing with flammables, um, if you're in the refrigeration part of our business, you know, we're working on propane uh, self-contains all the time now. So back in the 80s, I'm sorry to date myself. Um, back in the 80s, we put propane in our 12 refrigeration systems for oil return. Yep. You know, we would add some you know a few ounces of propane just yeah. to get the return back on the rack system. I mean it so is an amazing refrigerator. It absolutely is. It just <laughs> has a, that one problem. It does. Just don't light a match or does. smoke. Yeah. <laughs> just being a bomb makes is a little bit absolutely. of a problem. Yeah, but absolutely. Yeah. So anyway it's I would just say you know just just stay calm and uh, and get trained and you'll be fine. Sure, right, absolutely. Well speaking of training, just to change topics just for uh, another second, um, what do you think about our industry? How are we doing as an industry? And I'm talking carrier train you, you we go through the, the list in training our technicians new technicians and upgrading our older technicians as yeah. a whole as a, what, as grade, a, as, what grade would you okay give as a whole i would give us a d 
Um, okay. And I wouldn't quite give it an F because there are some people doing really good work. Sure, sure. And uh, and I always want to give credit where credit's due. Absolutely. Um, I mean, you're part of the industry and you're doing a great job. Um, when you talk about the, the big players, though, um, I, I don't think it's because they don't want to. I think it's everybody's at a little bit of a loss right now. Um, it's like we're trying to teach people how to ride a bicycle by having them read a book. Yeah. Um, that stole from Sandler Sales, by the way. But you, 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 you can't teach you know you can't teach a kid to ride to yeah. ride a bicycle by reading a book, right. and right. you can't teach uh, air conditioning refrigeration on a podcast. You know, and a lot of people, oh, what the heck? He's the podcast guy, right? But but that's not what I'm doing. I'm not teaching people the trade no. on a podcast. I'm giving them some some tools. I'm giving them the, some of the right words, some of the ideas. Right. But that's why even HVAC school is for techs by techs. It's for people who are already doing the work, sure. Sure. who already have the hands on tactile experience. Experience, and now I'm supplementing their experience with this is why you see this. And then, right. oh my gosh, okay, now it makes sense. Right, sure. Uh, but a lot of times we end up putting, um, we put a cart before the horse, and in this case, the cart is a bunch of information, and the horse is some hands on tactical guidance to actually have experienced it and have done it. Um, and we have a generation of, of people coming up who ha- don't have as much hands-on experience, who haven't used yes. tools as much, That's don't right. have that common sense. You know, we will say common sense, but common sense from one generation is not the same as common sense from another. Sure. Common sure. sense from my kids' generation is the ability to use apps and navigate websites. And, you know, my grandpa has no idea what they're talking about. Right. We're like, Grandpa, that's common sense, right? And he would say, well, you know, change the oil on your car. Well, I don't know how to do that. Well, that's just common sense, right? Sure. But it's, it's sure. not common. Yeah, it does. So the, the trade is um, doing a poorly because they're not actually addressing the things that people really need to learn sure um sure. they're always kind of up here in the here's how you set the dip switches on our air handler here's how you <laughs> right. deal with our rather than like no the nitty-gritty understanding of what the heck's even it's going brand on it's brand specific it's brand specific understandable right of course because the degree, they're just they're just trying to shortcut it be like all right how do i get these people to stop Condemning TXVs, you know, like yeah. how do I how yeah. do I make that happen? Yeah, um, but yeah. you got to start way sooner than that. Like you got to start yeah. back at the basics and, you and work your way through. You so do. I think that's where where people are falling down on the job is is not being as thorough, as sure. detailed, giving the time, giving the hands on. All that takes time, and we right. need a, a fundamental rethink of trade education. Absolutely, and absolutely. Even we can talk about the manufacturers. You know, uh, I've been a carrier dealer. I was a carrier dealer for no, over thirty five yeah. years. Yeah. I love the brand. I love everything about them, but. It was brand specific, and you and I talked, I guess, on the way here yesterday. Um, the basics are still the basics. Yeah, you still got to know what a compressor does, mm-hmm. a condenser. You know, you still have to understand how those work together. I don't care how how high tech the equipment is. Yeah, it still has this cycle. Yeah, we just have more bells and whistles, and so teaching that at at the industry level doesn't seem to be. It seems to be left toward two year colleges, trade schools, mm-hmm. things of that private you know, industry and what you're doing online. Yeah. It's kind of like, I mean, an example of this would be you have these inverter um, compressors on heat pumps now that are able to go down to lower ambient conditions. Right. Unless you understand something about a compression ratio, yeah. you're going to have a really hard time understanding what they're even talking about, sure. what the purpose of vapor injection is. And so if right. you jump into vapor injection, you become a salesperson who's just repeating buzzwords. It's like, right. oh, it has vapor injection technology. It's like... What does that mean? You know, like, I have no clue what you're even right. talking about. Exactly. Oh, interstage yeah. compression? Like, what, what, what are you talking about, you know? Um, but if you understand compression ratio, back to basic reciprocating compressors and scroll compressors, right. then right. it's just makes sense. Oh, okay, I see the problem we're solving for here, you know? Exactly. And then, exactly. And then it, and it starts to make sense and be yeah. more clear. Yeah, you so. see what we're manipulating compression ratio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mass flow rates, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. And that's unless you, unless you kind of understand some of that. And again, I, I don't... I don't like coming at it, and I see myself doing this sometimes, where I come at it I'm a little condescending. I come at it like, well, if you don't know this, then you don't belong in this trade. Look, we need as many people in this trade as we possibly can get. I'm not going to tell anybody they don't belong, right? Um, but I'm addressing it as far as what is our industry responsibility in order to do a better job of getting people where they need sure. to be. Um, sure. Now, obviously, it comes down to the individual wanting to learn and having character and all that, but sure. I can't be their mommy and daddy. You know, like I got to do, I got to do what I do from a high level, and we got to do what we do at a high level to give people the best chance they can to succeed and then that I think we I think we still get a D as absolutely industry. absolutely and we do and we have those that come in and they don't understand how laborious it is yeah and they go well this might not be for me yeah you know, I thought it was gonna you know touch on some computer things and a unit would come off yeah yeah I didn't know how to carry this up the stairs <laughs> right it's kind of <laughs> like when you you know like I've had some a few of my kids are like we want to learn computer programming and the, when your only experience of a computer is a user interface 
then the idea of what actually goes behind that to make that happen is sure. like, well, this is boring. This makes no sense. You know, like I'm used to using a mouse. It's like, yeah, but you know all the steps that go before you use the mouse. You know all the steps that go full before that thermostat lights up on the wall. Exactly. If you think working on an air conditioner, it's, it's like saying working on an air conditioner is hitting the buttons up and down on a thermostat. Right. You know, right. that's a user interface. Exactly. There's layers behind that user interface. Absolutely. And, and I want to get people as close to an engineering level understanding without all this fancy math. You know, you don't sure. have to know all the super fancy math, but understanding this does that. Right. This causes that. Right. When I adjust this, that adjusts that. Adjusts exactly. that. This I makes this happen. That makes this happen. When I see this happening, yep. there's this down the line is sure. causing that to happen. Sure. Um, and I think that's where we still need to focus. And I think we can use modern tools um, to do that better than we've been doing. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we have a, uh, I've heard that the comment, you know, the unit can diagnose itself and tell you the compressor is bad, but it still takes a human being to pull it up the stairs, pull up the sure. roof hatch, take the old one out, put the new one in. Yeah. You know, and I would even say, and I would even say the computer is, is can be wrong sometimes. And sure. so knowing the input factors that help it come to that conclusion is something right. that I still, technicians are still going to need to know because all it takes is one sensor that's giving a wrong reading exactly. um, that is going to make it say this is wrong when it's actually that that's wrong. I mean, you see how many times a technician hey, will will say something like, I mean, the, the one I get all the time or have gotten all the time is like, man, I don't know what's going on, but no matter what I do, the pressures don't change. And it's like, well, are, are you depressing the core on the on the Schrader? Like, are you using the right end on the hose? Are you, you know, uh, and they go back, oh yeah, that wasn't pushing in. So it's like, yeah. so sometimes the tool, the instrument gives you an incorrect result and in knowing enough to know when you can't trust the instrument. Exactly. Um, exactly. And that's gonna always be the case. You're always sure. gonna have sensor drift. You're always gonna have sensor failure. You're always gonna have that. And that's where people who don't understand, you know, the kind of folks who say things like, well, I think the robots are gonna take over our industry. The only people who say that are people who don't understand how machines work. Of course. You know, yeah. <laughs> even sensors and everything require human beings to make exactly. sure that they're doing what they're supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, exactly. And we teach check and recheck. Check your equipment, you know. As great as the digital gauges and things are, I yeah. still have a regular analog set of gauges on my truck. Yeah. In case oh, my, yeah. In case my batteries fail. Sure. I mean, I do too. I can't, well, also because I just like them. You know, I just, oh, me too. I don't want to give like them up. Them. Yeah. yeah. I'm old school. I, I have was, an abacus on my truck. Too, I know. So as much as I like yeah. technology and I used to talk about probes and all this stuff, I still just prefer pulling my old school yellow jackets off and yeah. using the, you know, the PT chart that's embedded on clamp the face. Clamp a thermometer should, on the clamp line. Clamp a thermometer on I can do math. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I like to think I can. Addition and subtraction at least. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. I can do elementary school math. I'm really, I've really made it. Yeah, yeah. In our classes, we have S men, and we, all, we they learn on analog, and then we move them to S men for certain things. And yep. we find out a lot of times they're reading some pretty wacky readings. They have the the two yep. temperature probes crossed. You yeah, know, it's always stuff like that. Yeah, just those little minor things that, that yep. we look out for. And training does help, and training them to just continue to recheck themselves. Yeah. You know. Well, let me wrap up with this, and um, lastly, just uh, and, you know. Besides, I know your, your family is terrific. You've described them to us. I know that you're uh, super proud of, of, of your family and should be. But as far as the air conditioning industry, what you've done up to this point, what do you consider to be your greatest accomplishment as far as helping this industry? Yeah, um, it's, it's never the things that you imagine. Um, what it always comes down to is is a single person who you've in some ways impacted their life mm -hmm. um, in some way they they fell back in love with their work sure. um, that's one of my favorites and I, I hear that sometimes and the, I, I love to hear that because I've had that same experience um, somebody who comes up and says you know I, I never would have uh, never would have taken that leap um, sure. to a different part of the trade I have a very good friend of mine who uh, decided to move into like the rep side and the training side of the of the industry even though he was a technician in the field for many years mm -hmm. um, but listened to the podcast gave him the confidence to say I can cross over and do this different thing sure. Sure. Um, anything that anything that uh, helps people's lives and we I did one on mental health which really wasn't about air conditioning at all yeah I saw that uh, and I had a lot of people reach out uh, including the CEO of Caldwell Banker which was really weird um, but it happened, apparently he <laughs> listens to the podcast which makes no sense uh, but and then he came on the podcast after that uh, just kind of talking about the trades and all that and sure. uh, and his take was you know um, being willing to authentically talk about things that are maybe hard topics um, can actually help people's lives and and that's that's all I'm here to do um, because ultimately yeah. it comes down to an individual there's no reward there's no award there's no um, association meeting some big talk you give that's sure. worth more than just impacting someone's life absolutely for the good, absolutely for the good, yes. yeah. I believe that's why we do what we do and yeah. I know I know you do it and you do it in a huge way 
Um, there's not a student that we get in, in any time that has not already been familiar with what you do. Oh, thanks. And they, they listen to you and how they respect you. We hope to get a room full of them here today. Yeah, yeah, this is great. You guys did uh, such a great job with this. It's, it's really you. great seeing what you do and um, and connecting with it because, you know, I'm just down here. I'm just down there in Florida with my head down doing my thing most of the time. But it's cool to <laughs> pop up every once in a while and see what other folks are doing. It's absolutely, really, really absolutely. Awesome. But we are so pleased and, and grateful that you have spent time with us. Uh, for these past two days and we're looking forward to the event this afternoon and yeah. looking forward to hearing what you've got to say yeah and uh, checking in with you and I know we've got a lot of folks and we've got our folks over here uh, they're associated with be trained and yeah. uh, they really have been excited to get to know you as well yeah yeah that's it's awesome so, thank you so much for having me Brian I really absolutely thank you very much yeah.